raising the Titanic? If anything goes wrong, we lose four men, but if we don't bring them up, we lose them anyway. Christ, what was that? Trying to blast us loose. The greatest salvage operation of all time. Raise the Titanic. Tomorrow at 9 on Anglia. How many jobs do you have to do every single day? When you can be yourself, try the D treatment. Brook Bond D has the quality, strength, and flavor to make. Daddy dropped in the pond. To make you feel human again. Tony and his brothers came back from the club. All they wanted was a nice bit of grub. What, no meat? What, no meat? How about some nice British pork? What, no meat? British pork feeds a lot for not a lot. Doesn't have to cost a lot. What a lot for not a lot. What a lot, what a lot, what a lot. What about some nice British pork? One washing powder today is used in more homes, in more machines than any other. At today's lower temperatures, its biological action gives you unbeatable results. But this powder does more. It also cares for your whole wash, keeping it fresh and bright. There's nothing that can beat unique, new system Persil Automatic. No wonder it's Britain's most popular powder. Mrs. Judith Couchman, a teacher from Bath, tells us why she feeds her cat best ever whiskers. He is a fabulous cat. He's very happy, contented. Seems to me that best ever whiskers is the best food. I can have complete faith in it. Dizzy absolutely loves it. It's just head down till the whole lot's finished. Every scrap. That's thanks to our nutritionists working to ensure that today's whiskers is the most appetizing ever. I consider best ever whiskers to be the best cat food, much better than the other products, but certainly than those that I've tried. The cat looks healthy and thriving on it. Happy and contented. Happy cat. Happy me. Best ever whiskers. In tests, eight out of ten owners who expressed a preference said their cats preferred it. Lynx is different. Lynx is the all-over deodorant body spray for men. Lynx is musk, amber, spice. Lynx, because first impressions last. Hello again. We round off this evening now with a few words from Monsignor Michael Buckley. Good evening. No one likes to talk about sickness and death, though it's a subject we brush under the carpet. And yet, not one member of the human race has ever escaped death. And what do we Christians do about it? Well, I'll tell you something. We pray about it. And we do so for many reasons. First of all, we believe in healing. And the first healing we receive through our prayers is an understanding that all suffering is linked to the cross of Christ. Listen to the prayer of an Indian Christian in the time of his suffering. O tree of Calvary, he prays, send your roots deep down into my heart. Gather together the soil of my heart, the sands of my fickleness, the mud of my desires. Bind them all together, O tree of Calvary. Interlace them with thy strong roots and twine them with the network of thy love. And strange as it may seem to the unbeliever when we see our suffering in relation to the cross of Calvary and we unite it to the sufferings of Christ, then our suffering becomes a blessing and it helps us 
to grow spiritually and emotionally. Now let me give you an example of what I mean. Some years ago I attended a dying woman who became a Christian only three or four weeks before she died. And in those few short weeks she grew in every way. I've come to understand more about life and about myself in these past few weeks, she told me, than I did for the past 70 years of my selfish life. And that suffering becomes a blessing through prayer is seen in the thoughts of Archbishop William Temple. Father in heaven, he says, the world is full of pain and each of us has a share in it. For some it's a slight burden, for others it's crushing. But every Christian can turn it into a blessing if he will seek the companionship of Christ Jesus in his sufferings. Now when I was compiling the treasury of the Holy Spirit, I was quite overwhelmed by the positive power which Christians saw in suffering. They found through their prayers a serenity and a resignation and illness which is certainly more than human courage and I know that. And I've tried to sum up this attitude in a prayer which I composed for the treasury. God, you are a loving Father who will not cause us a needless tear. Give us then a, a peaceful heart at rest in the present trouble which afflicts us. For you know the right moment to lift that burden that oppresses us and so we place the present moment, as we do our whole lives, in your tender care. Put your rest in our minds and your peace in our hearts. And this resignation and suffering, it's a great healing. And in our illness, we're so healed that we pray not only for ourselves, but for others. And this Christian sentiment is echoed in the beautiful prayer of St. Mechtilde for those who nurse the sick. Lord, I thank you that in your love you have taken from me all earthly riches and that you now clothe and feed me through the kindness of others. Lord, I thank you that since you have taken from me the sight of my eyes, you serve me now with the eyes of others. Uh, that's very like the blind boy. I saw pushing a boy without legs in Lourdes. Their healing was in their willingness to receive help from one another and to give in return what the other lacked. And this is what we call Christian compassion. And you know, suffering is in old age and it comes to us all in varying degrees, we dread it. What's to become of us when we can no longer look after ourselves? Where will we end our last days? And it's here that Christian prayer heals us of our fears and helps us to put the last years of our lives into the hands of our loving Father. And my great heroine, my student days was the French archaeologist Thierry de Chardin. And his deep insights into loneliness and rejection were the inspiration of his prayer. He writes, When the signs of age begin to mark my body, and still more when they touch my mind, when the painful moment comes in which I suddenly awaken to the fact that I am ill or growing old, in all the, these dark moments, O oh God, Grant that I may understand that it is you who are painfully parting the fibers of my being in order to bear me away within yourself. And the great final healing, of course, is that death is no victory over the Christian. However, there's our, our final judgment. And here another Frenchman, Paul Claudel, teaches us that we've nothing to fear if we trust in God's mercy. He writes a lovely prayer. Have pity upon every man, Lord, in that hour, when he has finished his task and stands before thee like a child whose hands are being examined. Ah, oh, yes. In Christian prayer, we find a treasure of healing beyond all price. Good night. God bless you. And that brings us to the end of our programmes for this evening, and as it's getting rather late, I'll just bid you a very good night from all of us here at Anglia House and leave you with a quick look at programmes we can see for Saturday night.
And until tomorrow, we leave you with the last reminder to switch off your television sets this evening. Good night and sleep well.